In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather this morning as God's family to celebrate the fifth day of the octave of Christmas. And in order that we might more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in the blessed childbearing of the Holy Virgin Mary kept the flesh of your Son free from the sentence incurred by the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have been taken up into this new creation may be freed from the ancient taint of sin. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter, from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard, and yet I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you, for the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light yet hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. The Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty go before him, praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. 
Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. So many times people come to me and say, Father, I just don't feel good. Many people are beset by sadness, or grief, or anger, or conflict. And they come and they say, Father, what do I need to do to make all of this go away? And I always tell them the same thing. Well, first, you need to make a good confession to cleanse your heart of all that sin has inevitably brought to your life. And the way, as the evangelist John writes in his first letter, the ways in which the darkness has clouded your sight and your understanding. The second is to take a clear inventory of your life. This is foundational for any of the vocations to ask honestly, Lord, what is the work and the activity and the relationships that you will bless in my life? The third step is to ask to be liberated from attachment to all of the emotions which may be connected to the events of one's life and in a particular way the recollection of past memory. God's enemy loves to capitalize on hurtful memories of things that did not go well and either on our guilt over the ways that we have harmed another or our resentment over the ways that we have been harmed by another. And the final step is to come to our risen Lord and say, Lord, all of these things, all of my recollection of the past, all of my anticipation of the future, and all of the legitimate emotions, all of the sadness, all of the grief, all of the guilt, all of the shame, all of the resentment, all of the anger, all of the conflict, I lay at your feet because I do not want to allow any of these things to cloud my understanding of what you have called me to do. Break my addiction, Lord, to things that are easy. Break my addiction, Lord, to things that are pleasant. It's not to say that I won't accept something easy and or pleasant when they come, but Lord, do not let that become the primary motive of my life.
We know from the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary. At the very beginning of our Lord's life, at the presentation, Simeon prophesies to her and says, A sword will pierce your heart. And she discovered in her life over and over and over again that this would be true. It reached its pinnacle at the foot of the cross. When they laid the body of her dead son in her arms. And remember that in that moment she did not know the resurrection. She did not know what was to come. All she knew in that moment was that her son had died. It wasn't long before our Lord came to her after the resurrection to show her again that in his surrender to the will of the Father, he has made all things new. And so we too follow in her footsteps in those difficult moments, moments of sadness, moments of struggle, moments when nothing seems to make sense anymore, moments in which we accept the faithfulness of our Father in heaven as a pure article of faith in those moments when the evidence of our work and our activity and our relationships seem to indicate that all has been lost. Just as we said yesterday, God uses anything that is not sin for the purpose of our sanctification that we might attain the fullness of our being not in having a great or easy or pleasant life here on earth but to attain the much greater life of being a saint in heaven and so day after day after day in our prayer in our work in our activity in our relationships we say lord strengthen my confidence that you are indeed not only present but active in this moment in this event active in all of the emotions that accompany this event or this memory strengthen my confidence that you lead me, that you guide me to live in intimate union in your kingdom forever. Trusting in the Lord's goodness, let us turn to him with our prayers and petitions. For the church throughout the world, may the love of Christ continue to transform us into his likeness. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who govern nations, may the Spirit bless them with wisdom and right judgment in their efforts to protect the sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are lonely, may the Lord console and lift their spirits. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may the grace of the sacraments transform us and deepen our commitment to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Charles Britt, the intention of this Holy Mass, may they soon be welcomed into the eternal banquet by our Lord and all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving and eternal God, the light of all nations, Hear these prayers which we bring before you with trusting hearts and answer them in accordance with your divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor when our frailty is assumed by your word not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so, in, the company, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth a Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Merry Christmas, everybody.